This is Keith Williams. Welcome to Five Watt World. We're interested in helping you get the most music from the least gear. As my old friend Rick Beato sometimes recounts on a live stream. Yeah. When was that? March. March. Back last March when yeah. Keith's channel Not had, that counting. had about 400 yeah. subscribers and now he's got about 50,000. 427. I had 427. 400, 427. Yes. 427. When I landed in Atlanta in March of 2019 to make a few videos with him, Five Watt World had about 400 subscribers. I'd been posting videos for about a year, but none had been able to peek over the horizon of the YouTube algorithm yet. After those three days with Rick, I left with 1,200 subscribers that were the seed for the more than 86,000 members of 5 Watt World today. I sometimes joke that I'm a remora in Rick's great white shark world of YouTube. Rick, Rhett Scholl, and Dave Honorado have been amazing about helping to promote 5 Watt World. So I decided that I'd pay it forward and make a video about my 10 favorite YouTube channels that deserve a wider audience. I really don't trust YouTube to serve them up to you in your suggested videos, and as most of us have more time right now for consuming media, I figured now was the right time to make a 5 Watt World's Favorites 2020 edition. If you enjoy the videos we make at 5 Watt World, but haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that now. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when we put out new videos. And if you've already subscribed, swing by the store to grab a t-shirt or a hoodie to support what we're doing here. There's a link in the description. So these really aren't in any ranked order, but I'll count them down so we can keep track of where we are. Number 10, Tom Bukovac. The session man, little Tommy Bukovac, jumped into YouTube at the beginning of the COVID lockdown time with daily posts live from his garage. With a backdrop of ladders, kids' toys, and vintage marshals, he hands out nuggets of wisdom on the state of guitar playing both inside and outside of the studio. When people ask me what they should do on YouTube, I always answer the same way, be your unique self. Tell the story that only you can tell. Well, no one had to tell Tom to be his authentic coffee and rolling rock sipping self while sharing a glimpse of the studio life most of us will never see. I'm not sure how long we'll have the pleasure of Book's company here, so enjoy it while he's still holed up in his garage with his iPhone. Number nine, Zach Childs. I love how Zach Childs kicks off his videos on Ask Zach. Well, hello friends and welcome to another Ask Zach. I always feel like I'm attending some sort of guitar nerd support group a crowd in which I feel most welcome. I found Zach through the exceptional True Tone Lounge, where he interviews session and touring musicians from around his home base in Nashville. He's written the question and answer column for Vintage Guitar Magazine for 15 years. On his recently launched channel, Ask Zach, he shares everything from his experiences being Brad Paisley's guitar tech to the minutia of late 60s maple cap tellies. If I was ever in the market for a vintage Fender, Zach is the guy I'd pick up on the way to the store. He's one of those rare people, like Dave Honorado, who already knows most of what I have to read about to make the short histories. And I highly recommend you join me for each of his videos. Number eight, Alberto Barrero. Gear demos have become something of a desert. So when I come across someone who's playing has that elusive something different that consistently keeps my attention, I'm there. I came across Alberto when I was looking for a demo of a pedal, but I keep watching Alberto because the music he writes and the videos he makes are beautiful and subtly different. Based in Barcelona, he works as a guitarist, producer, and performer, and he consistently puts up videos that I refer back to years later. And no, I don't speak Spanish, but the subtitles save me. Number seven, Jeff McElain. Coming out of my jazz coma about 10 years ago, I cast about looking for instruction in rock and blues and found Jeff McElane over at Truefire. His extraordinary ability has taken him to teaching, touring, and recording with Robin Ford. I'd say that for many of us, having to take a solo after Robin just finished is probably a dream come true and a bit of a nightmare all at once. When I want to know more about what to play over the blues, it's to Jeff's deep well of knowledge that I turn. That's Jeff playing the intro and outro on our Beano album short history video. You should check him out. Number six. Okay, this is the first of two cheater categories on the list, where I squeeze three guys into one number. Stay with me. I'm a big snarky puppy fan, but I'm a bigger fan of the spin-off bands that the members have. If you want to know more about the gigging universe of the pups, then you should be watching guitarist Mark Lettieri and saxophonist Bob Reynolds' channels. Both offer great insight into what it is to be a modern musician, piecing a living together from touring, teaching, and promotion. It was through these two that I also found bassist Yannick Guizala. Yannick's a classical guitarist turned jazz bassist, and he went to school at Berkeley with Bob before bouncing into a jazz career in New York. And his daily vlog posts are epic and dusted with bits of practical wisdom on theory and performing. Number five, Anthony Mutharaja. 
An early member of 5 Watt World told me about Anthony Mutharaja when I was looking for someone to play the intro and outro music for the short history of the Fender Jazz Bass. Anthony was very willing to collaborate, but what I also found on his channel was a no-nonsense approach to working on our playing chops. From theory to practice, he's a bassist who thinks about why we do the things we do. I once said to an old jazz drummer that I thought the drums were the motor of the band, and he immediately corrected me saying, then you're not paying close enough attention to the bass. That's been good advice, and Anthony is one of the bass players I pay attention to. Number four, Sean Tubbs. Sean is probably best known as a decade-long member of Carrie Underwood's touring and recording band. Like many of us, he seems to be fascinated by the playing of people like Robin Ford and Eric Johnson, but unlike most of us, he seems to have figured out a way to work some of it into his playing. He also has relationships with three of my favorite gear companies doing their demos, Rev Amps, Two Notes, and J Rocket Pedals. Check out his three-part series on playing outside lines over changes. It's light on the theory and heavy on the practical side, something we can probably all use right now. Number three, Christian Henson. Rick Beato turned me on to Christian's channel a couple years ago. His sample library company, Spitfire Audio, has taken off and his videos have become more specific to that community. To present to you the world premiere of music by 300 strangers. But Christian's first 100 to 150 videos are all gold. I binge watched them over a couple of weeks last year. He's clearly an incredibly thoughtful guy who's made a career in the music business that he never expected to have. Something that I think applies to most of us making a living in music today. In particular, I recommend his 100 Do's and Don'ts video. Though titled as being about media composition, if you record a child singing a song, don't put auto-tune on them. It's like kind of putting lipstick on a baby. It's nothing kind of illegal about it. It's just creepy. Do use live musicians. Don't upgrade your operating system in the middle of a project. Don't upgrade your computer system in the middle of a project. And don't upgrade your operating system in the middle of a project. And don't upgrade your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband or wife in the middle of a project. And don't upgrade your operating system in the middle of a project. There's good advice in there for all of us. Number two, Chris Buck. Like my buddy Rhett Scholl, Chris Buck is the multifaceted modern musician. Touring with the band Buck and Evans, a clinician, gear hound, and pedal explorer who takes us along for the ride with his Friday Fretworks videos. In his seemingly unscripted videos, he shares his candid experiences with a piece of gear or on doing an appearance for Yamaha Line 6. They're always time well spent. And he's also the rare blues rocker not afraid of outlining a diminished chord in a lead line. Where did that come from? Chris is not just here to promote his touring life. He's clearly decided to create a community on YouTube, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Number one, Winnipeg, Canada. Okay, what's in the water up in Winnipeg? As Joey Landreth recently reminded us on Jeff McElane's Brooklyn Lockdown show, it's 24 hours from Toronto and 26 hours from Vancouver by car. It's sort of an island. It seems to be the Iceland of Canada, if you will, you know, where everybody's a musician or a poet. In their isolation, they all seem to have decided to entertain each other. All to our benefit, really. In the last two years, a good share of my listening has come from there. I've renewed my interest in slide guitar, listening to Ariel Posen and Joey Landreth. I mean, how can both of these guys come out of the same town? Do they hand out a slide when they go to kindergarten? You know, okay kids, here's your crayons, here's your paper. Oh wait, here's your starter brass slide. No, no, Joey, don't put that in your mouth. <laughs> and then my wife, Anne, found William Prince. Anne's in charge of all the singer-songwriter discoveries at our house, and Prince has been the most powerful discovery in years. William's recent record, produced by Dave Cobb in Nashville and Scott Nolan back in Winnipeg, launched him from his home on the Peguis First Nation in Manitoba to opening for Neil Young. You can sit by the ocean, but that won't make you into a shell. Be the first there on Sunday, that don't mean one day heaven's there. Cause faith without action is just spinning, no traction, what the hell? Like a life with no dream is just waking and sleeping till you're dead. First you crawl, then you walk, walk, then you run, crash into things now and then. All too close to the sun, generation numb, burning the tips of our wings. It's just the push and the pull, the yell and the whisper, hallucination of time. 
the concept of distance and some old, 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 old soul. In between the old, 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 old soul. His album Reliever is a cross-cultural treasure from our own backyard. I highly recommend the series of videos he made called The Sunday Verse, where in podcast form he shares the story of each song on the album. And that's my 2020 list. Obviously, the next thing y'all need to do is put your favorite or favorites in the comments so that all of us can benefit from the hive mind that is the 5 Watt Worlds membership. I'll put links to all the channels from the video down in the description so it's easy for you to find your way there. If you had fun watching this video, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that too. And if you really want to support these videos, stop by the store and grab a t-shirt or a hoodie. There's a link in the top of the description. Thanks for watching. Until next time, thanks for being a part of the 5-Watt world.